Hello. Welcome to Football Journeys, a B5 consultancy podcast presented by me, Matt Hemsworth. And me, Fraser Franks. Football Journeys is a podcast that ignores the glitz and the glamour of the beautiful game in favour of the pain, the graft and the rejection. Uh, For my part, I've been a media lawyer for nearly 20 years now and I work with clubs and I work with players to help protect their reputation, their privacy, but ultimately it's about protecting the well-being of the young men and women uh, that go through that journey through the game that we love. And for me, I've been through that journey. I was an academy player at Chelsea and Brentford before setting on a career in the lower leagues with the likes of Luton Town, Stevenage and Newport County. Before my career ended at the age of 28, I went to a heart defect. B5 Consultancy is about combining that experience to help players young and old, um, to make good decisions off the pitch, uh, but also to be there to support players when life doesn't go according to plan. In this series, we're talking to Liverpool FC's class of 2013-14. Those lads that came through that famous academy at Kirby, but didn't quite make it through to realise their Anfield dream. This is Football Journeys. This week on Football Journeys, we spoke to Pedro Kiravella, the Spaniard who came through the youth system at his boyhood club Valencia, before making the move to England along with his family when he signed for Liverpool at the age of 16. He made his debut for Liverpool at the age of 18 in Europe and has gone on to play top flight football in four different countries. He had a roller coaster of a time at Anfield where paperwork has strangely played a significant part in his football career. A member of Jurgen Klopp's title winning campaign where he featured six times across all competitions in the 2019-20 season, even captain in a young Liverpool team in the League Cup against Aston Villa. Despite being offered a new contract to stay at Liverpool, he decided it was time for a fresh start and time to establish himself as a first team regular, and in the summer of 2020 signed for Nantes in the top flight of French football. A player who has had some extraordinary experiences within the game and an episode we hope you enjoy. Well, Pedro, thanks for joining us today. Um, we're sorry that it's on Zoom. I think when we started this series up, you were a player we wanted to speak to. And I think Fraser and I had this great idea that we'd be getting on a flight and we'd be watching you play for non. We'd be having a good time on the West Coast of France, but we're not with you. We're on Zoom, but we're really grateful for you uh, joining us today. So, uh, so welcome. Thank you very much. Um, if we can start... Um, we're going to obviously start before Liverpool. Uh, we want to talk to you about your early life in Spain. Uh, you are a, a Valencia boy, or at least you grew up in a village five miles from Valencia. And I guess it would be right to say that your early days were quite simple. You were a talented footballer. You went to your local academy at Valencia, and that was, was what your life was all about. Can you tell us a little bit about the Spanish system and, and your early days playing in Spain? Oh, yeah, I remember very well. I think uh, my cousin, he started playing for Valencia one year before me because he's one year uh, older than me. So when I saw him that he was going to training every day, he was playing football. That's when I really um, started wanting to to go to to the academy. And the year after, when I was five years old, I think uh, my parents just took me there and I started training uh, with the under five or under six, something like this. And yeah, just like a normal normal life for a, for a young um, young guy who wants to be a football player one day. I just, I was going to school every day. After the school, I had three or four times training per week. And um, I just remember it very well. And, you know, it's, um, it was a great um, childhood for me when I was, when I was there. And tell us a bit about your family. Um, as far as I know, it's, it's mum, dad, and, and you've got a younger brother. Um, who was the kind of driver in relation to football? And, you know, what, what, what was the family relationship? Since, since I was really, really young, I, I, I knew that my family loved football because that was all that we were talking about at, at the house, uh, at the TV. It was only football, Valencia games, Real Madrid games. So from, from a very young age, I, I, I knew that my family was very onto football. As I said, um, I'm lucky because I've, I've got three or four cousins that are one year older than me, two years older than me. So, so when I was young, when I was a kid, they were a little bit older than me and, and they started playing football before me. So it's something I've always had at, at my surroundings. So, so yeah, it was easy, but I think it was mainly my granddad who who took me every day to training because my dad was working and my mom was uh, working as well. So he made a lot of uh, effort for me to to start in that professional environment of, of football. 
Um, so F Fraser and I know that sort of within the English system, even at a very young age, parents and grandparents have to give up a lot of time. So I, I guess in many ways, you, you, you or at least your parents owe your granddad a hell of a lot because getting to games, presumably you weren't just playing in Valencia, you would play what, across Spain? Yeah, so when you are young, you play around the Valencian community, which is Castellón, Valencia and Alicante are the three cities that, that we used to play against each other. And then when I got to 13, 14, then it's when you start playing tournaments all around Spain and obviously the national team calls you up and uh, stuff like this. But yeah, when I was young, it was just the, the three cities of, of Valencia. And things, things went very well from an early age. And uh, I think, am I right in saying that by the age of about 15, you were representing your country, you were representing Spain, and I think you were playing academy level, under 18, under 19 level. Um, at, at that stage, I think there was uh, there was some reports, I don't know if it's true or not, but from interest from Barcelona. But I mean, at that stage, were you totally focused on Valencia because eventually you end up co going to England. So how, how did that change? Um, that, that thing about Barcelona, I was quite close to, to leave Valencia and go to Barca when I was 13, I think, 13 or 14 years old. But I was not... Uh, brave enough to make the, the next step because I thought leaving my family with 13 years old, I uh, was not ready for it. And uh, after discussing with, with my parents, my brother, we thought that, you know, if I kept playing at a high level, I thought that opportunity, opportunity was going to come again. So that's what I thought that when I was 13, the right thing for me was to stay at Valencia. But yeah, it's true that I was quite close to, to join Barca. And I would imagine that the 15-year-old Pedro, uh, your hopes and dreams, you're thinking about playing at Mastaya, you, you want to be a Valencia player. And, and I should say, I think I'm right in saying that Valencia is, that's your family's team. That's a team that your family supports. I, mean, I guess that was what you saw your future, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I was not thinking about anything else than just uh, reaching the top level at Valencia. Um, but honestly, I was just like a normal guy who, who was going to school every day. And after that, I uh, was training with my friends. Um, I was lucky enough to train with my friends at a big academy like, like Valencia, where you start and you learn to compete very, very early. Because as, as Liverpool, when, when you are there, you have to win every game. You have to win every tournament you go in. You train to get better. But for me, on my head, was just like, uh, as I said, uh, having fun with my mates. And I think that was, that was good. Uh, on my head because I didn't have the pressure to to really perform. I was just enjoying football. And I don't know whether you can do this comparison because obviously you moved to a scholarship at Liverpool from the younger years at Valencia. But do you see any differences between what you have at a youth level in Spain or, or at least at Valencia compared to what, what happens in England and, and what you experienced at Liverpool? I think it's, it's quite similar. If I have to say something, I think from... From a young age in Spain, we work more tactically than in England when I arrived. Um, I think there are some things in Spain that you do, you start doing when you are nine, ten years old. And I think in England, that's a little bit later where, where there, I think in England, they teach you more individually how to make some dribbles, how to take a good touch. But I think in Spain, when you are young, it's more about the team and, and about playing together. I think that was the, the difference I... I saw when I arrived to England. So you were, as a young boy, looking at your future, playing at the Mastaya, playing for Valencia. Um, what changed? I think the situation of the club, the, the president that was there, he left. There was a time where, where the academy was a little bit left behind um, because of the situation of the first team. So there was a moment when I was 16 that I arrived to training it's not like England, by the way. I, I still went to school all the day and from nine to five. And then from five to seven, I was going to training. And I arrived and I put my things in between two, two changing rooms because I didn't know which, uh, from what team I was going to train. So I waited there and then one coach told me that I was going to train with the under-19s. The other coach told me that I had to train with him. So it was like a little um, misunderstanding in the club that I didn't think it was the right thing for me to, to, to be there. Uh, as an example, I remember one day I went to train in the morning, uh, in a Saturday. I went to train in the morning and I arrived there and the coach from the, from the 19th, he asked me, what are you doing here? I said, oh, I don't know, I'm training with, with you guys, no? 
at that time I was 16. And he told me, no, you are playing this afternoon with the under 18s. And no one, no one told me that, you know, it was like the things at the academy were a little bit confused. So that's when I thought that if, if it didn't change, I had to leave. And when did you find out about Liverpool's interest? How did that come about? And uh, what were the conversations that you had with your family? It was after a tournament with the national team in Madrid. Uh, we played Italy, France and Czech Republic. And after that, uh, my agent told me that um, there were scouts from Liverpool watching that tournament and I, and I really did well. And they started talking with my parents first. Um, and after that, my, my partners told me that, you know, Liverpool were interested in me and, and we, we discussed together. We, we thought, first of all, about, about me, but also about the family. And uh, we decided that, I think that was like in April. And I think two months later, I was already in, in Liverpool. Wow. You mentioned the family. Um, the, the impact on your family of that move was, was huge. I mean, it turns out for the positive, but it was a massive risk. Um, I think I'm right in saying that your dad had a business in Valencia, which he had to give up and the whole family went, which included your little brother as well. So, I mean, yeah. that's about the, up, the upheaval of leaving home, which was, as you described, really comfortable um, and then moving abroad to one of the biggest clubs in, in England. Yeah, uh, I remember when, when Liverpool came, they, I, I said straight away that I wanted to go no matter what, even if I, if I went alone. But inside me, I was thinking, if I, want, if I go alone, that was going to be a, a massive change for me. But I wanted to say that for my family to be calm and, and, and relaxed. And I was happy to go by myself. But after that, my, my parents told me that, no, no, if, if you go, we'll go with you. We are a family. You're still young. Uh, I don't think it's the right thing for you to go on your own. So we'll, we'll go with you. And that for me was really the, the final thing about making the, the decision of, of uh, going to Liverpool and it was I think if it wasn't for that the first few months in Liverpool was going to be completely different and, and that included your, your little brother going as well I, it, it's massive and I know the two of you are really close um, but it's a massive upheaval that your your big brother has got a real talent and that means you've got to leave your school in Valencia and go and, and, and get schooled in, in England and move abroad I mean kind of, what was the impact on him and how did it change his life and his lifestyle yeah, I think uh, out of the four of us, for him, it was the, the, the hardest because he was in a different age. I was 16, you know, I, I, was, I wasn't I was a man, but I was on the way of being a man. He was only 13 by the time. 13 is, a, is an age where you start having real friends, where, where you start hanging out with your friends in, in, in the other houses and stuff like this. So for him, it was a, a massive change and, and a... And a really brave decision to, to come with me. And um, it was hard for him because, as I said, I went there to do what I love. He, he just went there to, to start really a new life in, in another school, uh, different language. Uh, so it was hard for him and my mom. But I think now, looking back after seven years, uh, I think we, we are so happy that we all made the decision of, of going to Liverpool. Um, from from doing our own research and obviously getting to know you over the last uh, couple of months, we know that you were 16 years old and you were an up and coming star at Valencia. And their fans and a lot of people around the area weren't too happy about your move to Liverpool. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, it was not it was not uh, great to be honest. Um, I felt that I was treated in a way that I shouldn't be treated because no one at 16 years old should be treated that way. Um, I remember, and that, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't do that because I, I was in a school one day and when all this was about to happen, I was always looking at my phone and looking at, at the comments of people, you know, you're 16, 15, you, you want to know what people think. And um, I remember saying to the, to the teacher that I needed to go to the toilet to, and, and I went there and I started looking at my phone and all the comments that I had of, of hate hate to my family, to my girlfriend at the time, to, to my brother, to everyone was, was too much, too much. And uh, that was like this for, for like a year. The first year was like that. Um, you know, people that know me were, were, go, were in Valencia just walking around the street and there was someone who, who recognized him by, by me 
and just starting saying bad things and and on Twitter, Instagram, all 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 these things like that was was horrible. And it's a really young age to be exposed to. I know it, it happens more than it should now, and it happens to first team players all over the world and all over the country. But it's a it's a big experience for a sixteen year old, especially with with the upheaval of with your whole family moving over to England. Did it have an effect on you, or do you feel like it it gave you an extra bit of resilience? And it it probably highlighted to you some of the issues that you would face, you know, as a first team player, and probably made you mature even more. Yeah, it did have a, have an effect on me because I, really I was not ready for that. I was not even thinking about people knowing me, you know, from Valencia. I was just a guy playing for the under 19s or 18s, and just left like many others leave. They go to Espanyol, to Villarreal, to another academy, but. Me, I went to Liverpool, and I think it was the first guy at Valencia that left uh, to in, that left, uh, you know, in a, in a young age to England. So, yeah, it had an effect on me, but I think it made me stronger and, and it made me realize what's what was gonna come because I think right now, as you said, there is a lot of players in in all the teams who are coming through who who obviously are not gonna perform every game at at 100 percent. And the social media is is a is a real bad um, communication thing for all this, but yeah, it it was it was hard. Did it hurt all the more that these were your people? You know, the people that grew up around you, and the the you know you yourself a Valencia supporter. These are not random strangers from around the world. They're they're, they're Valencians. Yeah, I have a I think like um, one of the guys who was tweeting me and and writing me bad things and all this was. <clears throat> I, I even when I think about this, is is crazy. It was one of the guys who was coming to watch us, my team, every every game in in the academy, and um, one of the messages I received was that I, when I come back to Valencia for holidays on, or something like this, he will know and he will be waiting for me at the airport. Wow. And uh, I remember showing it to my dad, and my dad was say, was telling me, "Don't worry, stuff like this." But I know my dad went to went to police and and actually reported it because it was not uh, not normal. And he was one of the guys who was always around the academy watching football and and, and stuff like this. Wowzers! Well, look, let's take you to Liverpool now. Um, you were not the only boy from Spain to come to Liverpool at that time. Um, and in fact, Sergi Canos, who came at the same time, had come from the same region as you. He was from Castellón, which was which is quite close to where you grew up as well. Um, was it a help to you that you arrived at the same time as uh, as Sergi? And I know that his family, he talked about Team Canos being his family and certainly of Team Kiravea as well. I mean, was that a big help to you? Yeah. Um, and I remember we were in a similar situation because he also played that tournament in, in Madrid with the national team. And I think it was after that also that, that Liverpool showed the, the, the interest on him. And uh, I remember talking to him, are you doing it? Are you signing? Are you not? So it was like a real uh, similar situations on it. Obviously, he took his family with him as as well. And I remember the first months, you know, it was like um, like a Canos Chiribella family over there. It was not Canos or Chiribella. We we were together every time. Um, the, all the traditions, the the paella on Sundays after after the match, we did everything together. And I think it was a a big help for for me and, and for them. I can quite see that. And obviously, as you know, one of the other lads that we've spoken to from your year was a lad whose dad was from Madrid, was Louis Robles. Um, and I know it was, it was tough for Louis because Sergi came in and effectively took took his place. But I know that he was very fond of both of you. And I know that he spoke a lot of Spanish to you boys when you, when you first arrived. I mean, how much of a help was Louis when, when you arrived? Yeah, it was massive because, you know, me my English was all right because I was in an English school back, back at Valencia. But uh, when I when I arrived to to Liverpool, the accent was something that took me for out of surprise. You know, I didn't I didn't know the the accent they have, and it was hard to to get into the rhythm of of talking in in that time. And that's where Louis, you know, appears in our in our life. You know, it, the first couple of weeks it was it was a uh, a couple of three. It was me, Sergi, and Louis going to going everywhere together to the tournaments to to the training. He was the one helping us with with the coaches, with with the teammates. So I, you know, I, I have a lot of sympathy for for Luis for for that uh, few months. And so when your scholarship starts, I think am, am I right in saying that there was a little bit of a full start where you couldn't you were training when you first arrived, but you weren't registered 
to play for quite some time. So tell us about how your first few months in England started. Yeah, so I arrived and, and the preseason was was great because I was able to play because it was not official games. I we went to the Mill Cup in Dublin, I think, in Ireland, and uh, that was my first tournament with Liverpool and and um, we did really well. We had a great team. I played every match. Um, for playing every match, I had a little injury in my cast that it took me out for for a month or so. And after that, I thought I was ready to play. And um, I remember Neil Critchley, the, the the coach, when I was fit to play, he he called me to his office and uh, he told me that uh, I I was not able to play. And at that time, I thought he was he was uh, taking the piss, you know. I didn't I didn't know. And then he told me that um, that there's been some problems with the papers that the um, the Valencian community didn't. They didn't give us the, the papers to play and, and I was without playing until November. Same as Sergi, I think. Sergi even a little bit more. So we, we were there for three months just training, but, you know. That must have created a real uncertainty for you because obviously um, as much as, you know, you were a, a top player, you'd be playing for Spain under 17s at the time and you were a top, top player, but you're still in a foreign country. You're still starting a new adventure and, and you're not getting to play. I mean, were, were you nervous about... Was England going to be a disaster at that point? No, and, and I think Liverpool as a club and obviously the coaches that I had around, they have a big um, big fault on, on me not not having to think about that, you know. I, I I just talked today to you guys, but I don't have a bad, a bad um, experience of my three months at Liverpool. I, I, I didn't think about it. I was just training. Um, they really put a lot of friendly games for me and Sergi, or a few players that were injured and could not play the, the league games. So it was like we had almost like one friendly game every 10 days, you know? So I was training and, and I was working for that friendly game that for me was like the biggest game of, of in the world. Now, the other, the other thing is um, that that gave you an opportunity to really get used to English football. And I think the thing that we talk about a lot is a increased physicality in England. How was that for you? Particularly the position that you play as a sort of deep-lying midfield player and your game is not so much tackling where someone like Jordan Rossiter might put the odd strong tackling. You were not as used to that coming from Spain. How, how was that culture shock for you? Actually, they they changed a little bit my position because in Spain I always played as an eight. But I play as an eight because the tempo is, is, is not as fast as in England and, and, and the eight in Spain is actually the one who who create things, you know. And in England, the eight normally is like a box-to-box midfielder where I'm, I'm not that type of player. So I remember talking with Alex Inglethorpe and Rodolfo Borre, who was still at the club by that time. They 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 thought that I was going to be a better player in England playing as a six. And I started playing as a six um, when I started playing for Liverpool. So for me, playing as a six, you don't have as much contact as you play as an eight. It, it can sound a little bit strange, but as an eight, there is more running, there is more long running, and there is more contact. Whether as a six, I think if you think um, before the action, you actually have a little bit of advantage, advantage on the other players. So I think that was one of the of the best decisions that um, the club, um, Alex or Rodolfo or whatever, made made on me because I think I was not ready for a box-to-box game for a running and fighting game and, and they saw that and they changed the, the position. Um, and talking of that physicality though, I mean, I think there was one game that stands out for you during your time, which was the, well, I think they call it the mini derby when <coughs> Everton play Liverpool uh, academy level. I mean, can, tell us that there was one particular game, I think, which was feisty is probably the word you used. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was my second or third game for Liverpool the, the first year. I played the first Southampton and after I think it was Everton away. And um, yeah, I remember just the tacklers were flying in. The ball was in the air the whole game. And I was thinking on the pitch, Whoa, what, what, what is this? You know, I was not, I was not used to it in Spain. On Spain, we, we just played the ball on the floor. We just played two touch, you no, know, you know, simple. There is no big tackles. And I remember especially one tackle that, that they did on me and, and another couple on, on Ryan Kent as well. 
that you know they, they they were vital they they went to youtube to twitter everyone was talking about it because it was something i think they they never seen seen before in spain let's move forward to 2015-16 that was your first season where you you, you effectively traveled from kirby to melwood where, as, because the train sites were were split in those days um you went on tour with the first team to asia and australia um tell us about that first team environment um you you probably heard a lot more familiar voices in the first team because there were a lot there were lots of Brazilian players, lots of Spanish players. Um, how easy was it made for you to enter that first team environment, particularly with all those Spanish speaking players and Portuguese speaking players? Yeah, but but by that time there was a lot of Spanish. It was I think four or five and Brazilian also four or five. So there was a lot of Latinos in in the first team. So I remember when I when I got called for the for the trip to to Asia on preseason. I was a bit nervous, but uh, after the first day, where Alberto, Lucas Leiva, everyone, you know, really made me very comfortable to to go, and and it was it was great because it's always hard for a foreign lad to to move up to the first team, you know, when you are so young and and you have maybe a lot of insecurities on on yourself. So I think that's very important for the big players to to you know to help you around and, and make you comfortable it was it was important they really helped me settle really well they they just in, in the rondo you know um they just took me in with them uh, they told me to go with them into every rondo every every team meal that we that we used to have so it was just making me as comfortable as possible the 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 soonest as possible you know so it was great and there's sort of two aspects of the first team manager which were important at that stage. Yes. Brendan Rodgers was in charge at the time. Brendan, just like Jurgen Klopp is now, is always keen to bring players through. So there were players like Harry Wilson and Ryan Kent, um, Jordan Ruster, Jordan Williams were all around that first team environment at the same time as you. So that was helpful for you. But you've also got the fact that Brendan's a fluent Spanish speaker as well um, and spoke to you in, in Spanish. So how important was Brendan in terms of your development? Yeah, it was very important. Also, as I said, a lot of players were speaking Spanish on the on the changing room, but also having the manager with a very very fluent Spanish, it was great for me. You know, um, my English was good at the time, but you know, you always feel better when when you can speak on your own language with with uh, someone as important as the manager. You know, in a football club, so it was great. He he spoke a lot with me. He he would ask me how my family was, how everything was outside the pitch. And I remember it was a big help for, for the couple of months or, or three months that I was there with him. And yeah, the, the fact that the first team managers go into that level of effort as well for you as a young boy, um, it's, uh, he, I mean, your English was good at, even back then, obviously, as everyone can hear, is fantastic now. Brendan could easily have spoken to you in the English language and you wouldn't have had a problem with it. But was it the fact that he went to the trouble to do so with you as a young kid um, that, that meant a lot to you? Yeah, as I said, he he could have speak English with me as as he speaks with the rest of the squad, you know. But he he tried to to make me as comfortable as possible. So he knows that you know when you are away from from Spain, in this case, um, you want to speak Spanish with with some people, and and he knew that, and and he he made the effort of of speaking Spanish with me, and and it was you know great. You went to you went away on that tour, Asia and Australia, um, and then there were there were two priests and friendlies, and I think this was crucial for your move to the first team, wasn't it? So there was a friendly in Finland uh, against HJK Helsinki, and then the very next day there was a there was a friendly back in in England. I think you played in both of those games. I mean, how did you find out that you were going out to Finland, and and how did that whole process go for you? I think. Um, you know, in, in the tour in Asia, I, I trained really well. I was feeling very good uh, about myself in, in training. I didn't, I didn't saw that I was uh, away from, from the first team in, in you know, in, in training. I, I, I felt good. So when we arrived back to England, I think we had a couple of days off and I went back to Spain. And then when we come back, they made two squads for, for the games. And my name was in the first squad for, for Helsinki. So we traveled there, and again he gave me the opportunity to to come in. I I did very well when I come in again, and and on the plane back to England that night, he he told me that I, that I was in the squad for the second game of the weekend. It was against Swindon, 
and I played there again 45 minutes on the second half and I did well again and, and that's where I think I started just uh, to to be a real first team trainer you know what I mean be, be in, the, in the first team training for, for every day You then the season started and Liverpool were in the Europa League that season which meant an early fixture away in Bordeaux um, and as we said, Brendan likes to play young players. And I think in that early stage of the Europa League, he brought a few young players to Bordeaux. Were you expecting to play when you went out to France? No, honestly, no. I was so happy that I was in the, in the squad for a European game. Um, but I, I was not, you know, I was not thinking on, on playing. Um, I was on the bench. I started on, on the bench. And uh, I remember Colo Dure got, got injured after 25 minutes or something like that. And I was not... Even thinking of, of coming on, you know, it was there was another centre back on the bench. Colo obviously is a centre back, and um, he just told me to warm up quick because I was gonna I was gonna come on, and I think that made me not not be nervous because I was not I didn't have time to think about coming coming on in a in a game like like that. So I just warm up for two minutes. I I put everything I had to to be ready, and you know, and like that I was I was playing next to next to Jordan on, on the midfield. And when you say Jordan, so just so the listeners understand, so that was you and Jordan Russell with the midfield too at that point, which is uh, how old were you then? 18 and Jordan was 18. 18 and 18, I think, both 18 or yeah, something like that. That's phenomenal. And the, the speed at which you were brought on is, is crucial. I know I've spoken <coughs> to Fraser a lot about this. Um, it's not easy to come on as a sub. Uh, when you start a game, you can get into that mindset, but when you're a sub, you go into the game cold. I mean, Fraser, I know you hate to use a centre-back going on as a substitute. It's usually, uh, yeah, you're never really going to be the match winner, so there's usually more to lose than more to gain. But yeah. as you said, if you, if when it is unexpected, sometimes that is the, the best case. I think if you're, if you're down there in the second half and you've been walk, warming up for yeah. half an hour, 40 minutes, it, and you're watching the game, it, it allows that time for nerves to build. But something that we spoke to a lot of the, the boys about, where they were desperate just to be able to say that they played for Liverpool's first team in a, in a competitive game. Uh, we spoke to Sergi and one of his big things was he obviously wanted to, to play for the first team, but he didn't want to be one of those players that makes a debut and is never seen again. What were your, what were your thoughts after the game? Was it, is it still a massive, uh, one of your greatest achievements in football? How were you feeling at the time? Yeah, but you know, after you play for the first team, you want more, you know, you, as Sergi said, you don't want to be just, the guy who played one game for for Liverpool, you know, and that's it. Um, me, I played, I played well, and I thought, now I want more. Now I want to play in the Premier League. I want to play, you know, more European games. So that's something that I think in a young player's mind you have, and I think it's good to have because you you are not a footballer star by playing only one one game for Liverpool. You know, you want more. You want to train more. After that, I remember the the day after. We there was two groups, one group training, one group recovery. But I played about 65, 70 minutes, and normally that's a, a recovery recovery group. So I asked the the fitness coach that I didn't want to to do any recovery. I wanted to train because you are so excited and you you don't feel the, you don't feel tired, you don't feel anything. You just want to train and hopefully you know play play more games. When you when you do make your debut, was there any kind of reaction back home in Valencia? Um, did it reaffirm to you that? I think I've made the right decision. I've just made my debut at 18 years old. Sometimes in Spain, when we spoke to Sergi, he said it can take a little bit of a longer pathway where if you're 18, you play for the under 18s. If you're 19, you play for the 19. So did it say to you or did it feel to you that you'd made the right decision? Yeah, that, that has changed a little bit now in Spain. I think they are looking more into the English academy way. But when I was back in Spain, I, I don't remember many players making their debuts at uh, 18, 19. I think... Um, it was a bit later, and for me personally, it was it was great. Uh, it was, you know, all the hard work, all the difficult decisions that we made as a family. You know, on that day, they 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 were made uh, valuable. You know, so for me, it was was great. But as I said, you enjoy, uh, you are happy, but you want more. So it's like a happy, but uh, a little bit. Nervous also because uh, you, you want more and, and you want to play more. Well, the thing that happened shortly after that would have made you feel even more nervous because um, Brendan had brought you into the first team environment. He'd been a good 
Um, he, he'd been a very important part of your progress for you. And he lost his job in, I think it was September. Um, and I think very quickly it was reported that Jurgen Klopp would take over. Um, how did you, I mean, first of all, how did you feel when you found out that Brendan was not going to be the manager anymore? And, and were you nervous about this big superstar German manager coming in? I was not good. I was, I was not happy when, when Bren, Brendan got, um, you know, he left. But um, straight away I called my dad. I said, oh, he's gone. I Now who's going to come? You know, he, he had confidence in me. He liked my game. And, um, you know, there was a couple of nights where I was thinking, is this my chance gone? You know, I don't know who's going to come. If, is he going to like me? Is he going to like my style of play? And then, obviously, when, when Jürgen de Gaffa, he got uh, appointed as the manager, it was even more pressure, you know, because he came from uh, winning the Bundesliga two times. He, he came from getting into the Champions League final with Dortmund. And it was a big personality, a big, big manager. Um, so I was thinking myself, is he going to trust in me for, for training? Is he going to give me the chance? But thankfully, he, you know, he, he continued what uh, Brendan was, was having with me. And, and from the first day, he, he took me you know, to, to be a part of his training. And it was, it was great. And as you said, he, he did give you a chance. And, um, and like he, he does now, uh, particularly in the Cups, I think you played as a substitute against Exeter City in the FA Cup. And then you made your full debut away at Upton Park or the bowling ground at, against West Ham. And I think that game went into extra time. Um, ultimately, you lost that game, but it was a young Liverpool team. And I think you played particularly well. I mean, that was, that was a, a real high point for you, I guess. Yeah, I think it's one of the best moments for me in, in uh, Liverpool shirt. I think because of everything, the the team we played, um, you know, West Ham had a good team. They had Payet, Lanzini, they had, you know, very good players. And um, the stadium, the old stadium, I think it was the last season of, of West Ham, uh, old stadium. And, um, you know, the atmosphere was, was great. And uh, I started the game very well. And that gave me confidence for for the whole 90 minutes. And I had to to come off because after, I don't know, 110 minutes or something like this, my calves were in my hamstring, my hamstring were in my glutes. You know, everything was <laughs> <laughs> everything was, was cramped. So I had to, to come off, but it was a real highlight on, on my career. Did it tell you I can play at this standard? Yeah, to be honest, um, it, it was a, leaf, a different rhythm to the European game at Bordeaux. It was completely different. At Bordeaux, we we had all, all position. They, they were not pressing us. They let us build up from the back. And I, I had time on the ball. I could turn. I could play forward passes. But I think against West Ham, it was really like a, a Premier League game, you know. And um, it made me feel that I was, you know, ready and, and able to, to play in the, in the level. And you did, you played in the Premier League. I think, was it one of the last games of the season? Um, and so Jürgen used it as an opportunity to try some young players. I think you played against Swansea City. And you won't forgive me for this, but um, you lost 3-1 to Swansea City. But again, you'd play, you'd play the Premier League debut. And Fraser asked you that question about your debut against Bordeaux. I guess it's one tick and then another tick. You play in the FA Cup, another tick to stay in the Premier League. And you're looking not just for ticks, but to, you know, to have as many games as possible and, and carve out a career. But was it important to you to play a Premier League game? You started that game. Yeah, and that came also from, um, it was after a semi-final in the Europa League against Villarreal. And um, that week I was so excited because Villarreal is, is 30 minutes away from my, from my city back in Spain. And Jürgen, he, he took me as a substitute against Villarreal. And I was warming up the whole second half and I, and I was thinking, am I coming in here in the semi-final of Europa League with all my family on the stands? So I was so, so excited. And, and then three days later, Sunday at 12 p.m., we, we played against, against Swansea. And the day before, he told me I was starting. So that's even more excitement on that week. And, um, you know, it, it was great to make my debut, but I think it was an opportunity that I lost. Um, I think not, not only me, you know, the whole team was, was not good on that day, but, you know, 18-year-old making his debut was was a big thing everywhere and I think it took me a little bit um, by surprise not not by surprise but I was not ready mentally 
to to be a Premier League uh, starter that day. And I think, yeah, it was not a good performance by myself, and and it's something I I regret a little bit. Did it, did it stay with you a few days afterwards, or even longer afterwards? <clears throat> no, a few a few months, I would say, a few months. When you when you say you wasn't mentally ready, in in what kind of way were you were you nervous before the game? Did you doubt yourself a little bit? Yeah, I was. As I said, I was so excited that week um, because I was on the bench with all my family against Villarreal. I was warming up. I thought I was coming in, and then three days later, you they tell you that you're gonna start in the Premier League, and that side excitement goes to ner- nervousness, you know. And I was so nervous. I, I didn't sleep one hour that night. Um, the game was early kickoff. It was raining. Um, Swansea, by that time, they, they had very good players who could play football. And I don't know, from, from the start, you know, I think football players, even in the warm-up, they can feel a little bit what's... Something's yeah. not good. And, and I felt that that day. I felt that. And, you know, I, I was not uh, good enough for, for the level. Is that something you've overcome with experience uh, in years or is there certain techniques that you use or people that you speak to uh, going into games? Mm, I think experience because before I was one of the players, I think I'm not the only one who the first pass of the warm-up or the first, uh, you know, the possession we do in the warm-up, if, if I was not good, then I had problems on the game. Obviously, no one realised that on under-18 level or 19 level, but when you go to the Premier League, and, and you know you are you are doing the warm up with uh, Coutinho, Firmino, players like this, and uh, you know you miss the first touch, you miss the first pass. That's on your on your head the the, the whole game, and that was on my head the whole game. It just it actually brings up memories you saying that because in my young days I was one of those as well that if I went out and if I sprinted out of the tunnel and my legs felt good or and I felt like I had good energy and started the warm up well, then I. I went into the game knowing that I was going to play well, but if your first touch goes under your foot, you start doubting yourself, then nerves creep in. And it is uh, it's something that probably no one really takes notice of or, of or speaks of. And probably something in football that, you know, coaches don't really care if the warm-up's unbelievable, if it's a little bit sloppy, they'll, they'll obviously mention it. But yeah, it's something that just hearing you talk about that brings back a few memories that I had and probably a few nerves that I had going into games as well. Yeah, I think it's. I think there is a lot of young players, especially who have this kind of problem, because uh, we used to talk with with each other in the in the changing room, national team or under 19s with Liverpool, and you know the first five minutes of the warm up is very important for the whole 90 minutes. Right now, it's for me it's finished. I I don't think about this any anymore. But at that time when I was 18. And you were making your debut in the Premier League. That was something huge, and you know something that I that I regret a little bit. Which well, one thing that comes up a lot? It already come up with your scholarship or injuries. So at the end of that season, 2015-16, was it during the summer you you got injured? And I, I think you had a was it a ruptured quad? Yeah, it was the first week of pre-season of the next season, um, and that put you out for a long time and when you are working so hard to get into one of the most competitive environments anyone can imagine which is the first team squad in the Premier League that set you back massively presumably yeah look I think it was all a consequence of my Premier League debut um, I thought I was not ready so in the summer I didn't take myself real holidays of, of just uh, three weeks without uh, doing nothing just you know, putting my head away from, from football. So Swansea was the first of May. So it was only I think it was the second to last game of the of the season. So we, we go to Europa League final the 18th of May. I remember everything of, of that period. The 18th of May and after the 19th of May we, we just go for holidays. And I remember I start working for for my pre preseason the 20th of May. That's like five weeks before the preseason started. And I think, um, you know, because it was the first preseason with Jürgen and his staff, I wanted to impress. I was not happy with my Premier League debut. So I overworked that summer. And when I arrived to, to, to England for the preseason, the first week I felt great, physically better, better than ever. But then the second week where the training starts increasing a little bit, we start playing friendly matches. I just uh, ruptured my quad. And and it was not it was not a 
you know, a small uh, rupture. And I remember my parents had all the flights and all booked for LA. That, that was the, the pre-season trip that, that season. And I had pain on my, on my quad for a couple of days, but I didn't say anything to the medical staff because I just wanted to play, train. And there was a moment where I, where, where I just had to say that, that I felt pain. So basically I trained with a ruptured quad for like two days. You know, I, it was really painful, really painful, but I didn't want to, want to say anything because I thought it was just dumps from, from training. So I went home and I told my family that I couldn't go to the trip and they canceled everything and they stayed with me. Was that a feeling of, I can't cancel this, mum and dad are flying and this is, this is what is supposed to happen. So I can't be injured and I'll just won't even, I'll ignore it. Yeah, it was that also and, and that I didn't want to, to, to miss any games. And I remember when I said it, I could not do it anymore. It was in the morning of a day that we, are gonna, we were going to play Fleetwood Town in the afternoon. So we trained in the morning and I was starting against Fleetwood in the afternoon. So I thought, okay, this is good. I'm going to start a game. But then in the morning, I just, I just said, I cannot, I cannot play, I cannot train. And they did a scan and they showed that I had a ruptured quad like this and I had to stop for like 10 weeks, nine weeks. Ouch. Um, so that, that, that meant during the whole of that transfer window um, and during the first part of the season, you were just not available. It, it, it set <coughs> massively. And I think I'm right in saying it, it, it meant that you were nowhere near the first team by the time you were fit. Um, so in January you agreed to go out on loan to the Eredivisie in the Netherlands. Uh, was, that a, was that something that was planned long ahead or did it come, come around during the transfer window? No, before, before the injury, the plans were I was staying with the first team because the GAFA wanted me for the cup games or European games in Europa League or going on loan. But I wanted to go on loan to Spain. So... We had a couple of options, but obviously, I think I got the, I don't know how you say in English, the, you know, the medical check to be okay for, for training. I got it the 31st or, or the 30th of August. So it was the last, last uh, day of the transfer window. So obviously nothing happened. But from there, to start being fit for games, it took me another six weeks. So we we're talking about November or something like this. So after that, I was playing with the 23s, training with the first team, but I didn't feel as I felt before, like physical. And we decided to go on loan to, to a league that suits me. And, and, and I think it was the 3rd of January or the 4th of January that we made the, the decision and I left. And just before that, when you had to go back to the 23s, it, sometimes it is quite hard to go back to the 23s. Um, what, what was it like playing back at Kirby? It was great, and, and I said it a lot of times. I think it's one of the periods where I enjoyed the most playing football, but because of the team we had, we had um, Trent right back. We had Thiago Lodi, Mamadou Sako, that they were playing with us that time. We had Conor Randall on the left or Joe Maguire. We had Kevin Stewart. We had me. We had Obie or Cam Branagan, and we had Harry Wilson, Ryan Kent. And Danny Ings, and that was the eleven we we used to play almost every week. So it was fantastic to to play with them, and and we really had a a good relationship between each other on the pitch, and we used to win games four zero five zero, and and we really used to, to to enjoy playing. That sounds like an advert for using B teams in England because that team was okay in the championship. I <laughs> <laughs> so but you did you ended up you got you went to the Netherlands um and go ahead eagles was was your destination it's um it's in a very small town called I'm, I'm not sure on the pronunciation but Deventer which is the population is only 100,000 um that's you've gone from Liverpool which is really intense a hugely famous football club to somewhere well a lot a lot different how different was the culture there and, and your lifestyle there it was very different very different on the football pitch and very different outside the pitch. Um, on the pitch, obviously, there was nowhere near as professional as, as Liverpool first team or even Liverpool 23s. Um, you know, small stadium, small training ground that was actually, you know, there was the stadium here and next to the stadium, there were two pitches that it was our training ground. 
and uh, the stadium was 10,000 people, if that. So it was a big difference. And also the city, you know, after 3 p.m., everything was shut down, no people in the street, uh, very, very cold. So it was a big change for me. But I went there to play and I played every game and, and I, I have a very good uh, memories of, of that uh, five months. And where were your family at this point? Were they still back in Liverpool? Uh, no. By that time, they were back in Spain and I was living with my cousin for the first three or four months in Holland um, because he's a professional physiotherapist and, you know, he sometimes he takes care of me when I have some little problems after the injury especially. And uh, after that, he went back to Spain and my father come for, came for the last two or three months of, on, in Holland. By that time, I, was not, I didn't see myself uh, living alone. And I speak about it. I was 19, okay, but I felt that especially away from Spain, I needed someone by my side. Um, now that, you know, I changed a little bit in that way, but before I, I thought that uh, I needed someone always um, not looking after me, but just being by myself, by myself, speaking to them, uh, telling them about training, about, about my life. So they, both of them, they made a, you know, a really, a really good job on, on my mental side. And the season that followed uh, <clears throat> looks as though it was maybe a bit more planned out. You went to a, a slightly bigger club in Eredivisie in Willem, well, I'm going to say Willem 2, but I presume they're not uh, pronounced in that way, uh, which is in Tilburg, which is a bigger city in uh, the Netherlands, a bigger club, bigger capacity, and, and a pretty decent team as well. I mean, was that a plan to get a whole season playing first team football under your belt? Um, yes, but again, Holland was maybe the second option because in my mind, alone, I always wanted to go alone to Spain because I missed Spain. I was already four or five years in England and I, and I wanted to, to go back home. But it's true that, <coughs> sorry, it's true that um, when you go alone from a big club like Liverpool, there's a lot of small clauses that they put on the contract of, of loan players. So teams in Spain were not uh, keen on, I don't know, having me to play X percent of, percentage of the games and stuff like this. And Willem Tue, they, they, they were really, really keen on me and, and they accepted everything that Liverpool put on, on the loan contract. And uh, I went there and, and it was a great decision professionally and, and personally as well. And it's a really, um, I think we're... We're always guilty of not looking outwardly enough. Um, the, you know, the Dutch league is a good competitive league and you would have been playing away games at places like PSV Eindhoven, and Feyenoord and, and, of course, Ajax. So they're big occasions where presumably there are 30,000, 40,000 fans there. And I think Villain themselves had, um, you know, 17,000 capacity, which they used to fill. Um, so you, you, you were playing big games of football there and, that, and I guess that's an important element. You don't play football to play in front of no one. You know, it's it's a proper men's football environment. And I guess that's what gives you the, the, the bug for not wanting to go back and play under 23s football after that kind of experience. Yeah, uh, as I said, I, I went to Liverpool as a 15, 16 year old just to play professional football. And, and professional football means full stadiums, um, real football atmosphere. And I think you, it's impossible to get that by playing 23s football. So... So whenever you go out on loan and, and you, you smell and you feel the, the professional football, you, you don't want to come back to, to 23s, obviously. We'll have to leave it there for part one. Please come back in part two to listen to more about Pedro's extraordinary journey. Thanks for listening to this episode of Football Journeys um, and thank you to all those who supported us. Do come and find us on social media at Journeys Pod on both Twitter and Instagram where we'll be sharing more content. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us on footballjourneys at b5consultancy.com or visit our webpage, b5consultancy.com slash footballjourneys. Please do like and subscribe. If you feel we deserve a five-star rating, then please give us one. The more successful this podcast is, the better chance we have of producing more, more episodes and further series.